Okay, teachers, so this isn't really about ACA test prep. This is just some tips to kind of help you uh, set up your testing center. If you're proctoring the exams uh, or you're asked for input on how to kind of set that up for your school, we've got some tips for you that'll make things a little bit easier. So the first thing is the students need to sign up and register and get their username and password. Um, I recommend that you do that with the students and you set up a convention for their username and password. If they need a specific username and password to sign into the computers at school, tell them to use that one. They, they can't forget it, right? They have to sign into a computer at your class every single day. They will remember that username and password. So uh, that's one option. If your school doesn't have that, you don't have anything where the students have been given a username and password where it's kind of easy to figure out what their username and password is, then what I recommend is that you create a convention of your own, right? So maybe it's their student number is the uh, username. That's almost always a really great username to use. And then, you know, the password is maybe their first and last name initials and then their birthday or, you know, just something really simple uh, and give them the format, you know, two, di two digits for the month, two digits for the date, two digits for the year so that it's a very, very simple convention. And when a kid says, I forgot my password, you can say, well, hopefully you haven't forgotten your name and your birthday, because that's what it is. It's your initials and your birthday. So um, setting it up that way is gonna just save a ton of problems. If on testing day, kids can't log in because they can't remember the username and password they picked, it's just a nightmare as a testing coordinator. Trust me, this is the voice of experience. Um, so if your school has a login that they assign to the kids, so it's a very simple uh, convention, right? The username and password are kind of all the same based on the kids' information. That's great to use. Otherwise, you make up your own, and, and they have to use that. Um, the second thing is that um, one of the things that helps to administer is that on testing day, my CertiPort password as administrator is very long and complex. You know, it's a good, solid password. But on testing day, I have to type that thing in like a million times. So on testing day, what I did was before each period, I changed it to something super fast, right? So maybe it was just one, two, three, right? And I would only do it for that period. So at the beginning of the period, Right as the kids are kind of walking in, I log in a CertiPort, change my password to one, two, three. That's gonna be the password for first period. The kids test, they, I put my uh, username on the board, so when it gets to the point where I have to put in the username and password, I have the kids put in my username. They type it in, so they're just sitting there waiting for me just to put in the password. So when I walk around, I just go one, two, three, enter, one, two, three, enter, one, two, three, enter. At the end, as soon as I've entered all of the kids in, then I go back and I change my password, okay? Or actually I do that at the end of the period because sometimes the test freezes and you gotta restart it. Keep it real simple for yourself. At the end of the period though, uh, I go back and I change it to my complex password. If next period is testing, I'm gonna change it to something else. So maybe it's gonna be JKL and I'll just do JKL, enter, JKL, enter because they've entered everything else. So that's a great way also on testing day to just not spend 20 minutes logging everybody in, okay? Put your username on the board. They know their username and password. They should be able to get right to that last screen, put in your username. So all you have to do is put in your password, which you have changed to something super short just for that period for testing. Uh, with all of that said, the very last thing is, um, and this just depends on your setup, if you are the testing coordinator at your school and you've got access to that part of, I think it's called the organization administrator. Um, if you're at that level, then uh, you'll be able to insert a port, um, you'll be able to make an exam group. And making exam groups is a great way to do things. Um, you can keep those records forever where you know, just looking up the the report from your testing center after a year, I think it kind of disappears. If you have an exam group, though, though, you can always look up that exam group. So even a kid three years ago says, hey, well, I can't remember what I got on the test. Do you have that information? You have it for them. So exam groups are great. It also, when you design the exam group, 
you tell them what test it needs to be. And that way the kids, in order to be in that exam group, to sign in using that exam group, it will automatically make sure that they're taking the proper test, the proper version and the proper software. That takes care of some problems too. If you're not the uh, organization administrator or whatever that is called on Certiport side, then just get in touch with that person and at the beginning of the year, set them an exam group for uh, your kids for the year. And it just makes it a lot easier to find information and make sure the kids are taking the right test. You will need to set up a different exam group for every exam. So if you have some kids taking Photoshop, some kids taking Illustrator, some kids taking Dreamweaver, you'll need three exam groups, one for each test. All right, uh, I think that that's it as far as tips and tricks go. I'll try and add more to this page if I think about stuff in the future, but those are some real great time-saving tips when it comes to actually rolling this out and doing the actual testing and having the kids test on testing day and making that uh, less painful experience.